Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Oh, I'm all fluffed. <laughs> Been scrambling around getting ready. How are you tonight? Jean's here. Debbie's here. Jean, two jeans. We got the double jeans. Uh, Mary's here. Awesome. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, tonight, we're going to have some more creative fun. How are you doing? Um, I hope you're well. Let me know in the comments if you're watching live, if you're watching later on the replay. You might be watching on my uh, Sue Stampfield YouTube channel. You might be over on Facebook um, in my Sue Stampfield group, or perhaps on my Susan Campfield Independent Demonstrator Facebook page. Wherever you are, welcome to my craft room. Come on in. We're not formal here. <laughs> We're very casual. We're going to relax. We're going to have some fun. We might make some mistakes <laughs> and then we'll fix them, right? Um, and we're just going to do some creative uh, escape this afternoon or this evening, I should say. Hello, Susan. Cindy's here. Sandra's here from Michigan. Kathy's here. Linda, Roz, gang's all here. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Judy, how are you? So tonight we're going to be, hey, Lisa, aloha from Hawaii. So good to have you on. What's the weather like in Hawaii? I'm curious. It's um, it's uh, warm here today in Minnesota. It was beautiful yesterday, cool and nice. Today it's a little warmer. It's 82 right now and a little humid, but not terrible. Um, I hope you can hear me all right. Let me know if there are any sound or um, vision issues, and I'll see what I can do on my end. So welcome. Um, we're going to do some creative tonight. I have some um, really fun things to share. I'm super excited. Warm in Hawaii. Yeah, I imagine. Um, beautiful day in Michigan. Good to know. Good to know. So we're going to do some creating tonight with a bundle. And we're actually not going to make a card. We're going to make um, a box. And then I have a whole bunch more to share with you. So um, I also wanted to show you the cards that I finished from last the last video that I, uh, I, I um, finished afterwards. I made one during the video and then I finished off a couple others that we had kind of played around with. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to switch to my desktop camera. Let me just like shove things over <laughs> so that you can see. Oh, goodness. Yep. Messy desk. That's how I roll. Now what happened here? Okay. Mm, yeah. All right. I guess you can just see the edges of them. We need this stuff, so I can't go too far. It's, it's going to just hang out right there. All right. So um, in the last video, you all helped me design this lovely card with the um, 3D uh, folder that is called the 3D embossing folder that is called a leaf ball because it's like swirling leaves. And I did have um, somebody that was watching the video that was asking, she said she has the Big Shot, not the newer Stampin' Up um, die cutting machine, but the Sizzix Big Shot. And she was wondering, what additional plates she would need to be able to do a 3D folder. And so the, the one that Stampin' Up! sells, the specialty plate, absolutely will work in the... Um, in the big shot. I even tried it just to make sure I was giving accurate information. So it, it embosses beautifully. So if you don't have that thicker plate, um, you know that you can purchase that um, the specialty plate from Stampin' Up! and it will work in your existing machine. So this is the one we created on the video. Um, if you recall, we had a large leaf as well. So after the video, I created this one. I like them both. <laughs> um, again, this would be a beautiful wedding for a fall wedding or a 50th anniversary or special birthday. Um, just kind of a real elegant look with the vanilla and the gold. Uh, distressed gold is so cool. Uh, it's hot in the UK. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hot everywhere, isn't it? Except for Australia. They're nice and cool. <laughs> Myrtle says it's hot and humid in Pennsylvania. Um, and then during that video, I used the um, silver and gold six by six uh, paper from Stampin' Up! Celebration event. It's a free paper with a $50 purchase. I'm stalling because oh, it's here somewhere, but gosh, who knows where? Oh, here it is. Found it. <laughs> 
So it comes in silver uh, polka dots and also silver stripes and then gold polka dots and gold stripes. So I took my blending brushes and I did Cherry Cobbler and Mango Melody um, on the gold dots. And then so after the video, I did finish that card with a gold leaf from the Brush Metallics. That one is also a free with a $50 purchase item right now. Um, so that and these dies, I guess we have a lot of celebration going on. So this is I'm sorry, not a $50 purchase. Um, a hundred dollar purchase you can get the dies that do this and also that do this aspen grove so we have two celebration products on here the aspen grove and the um, silver and gold polka dot paper or polka dots and stripes however the aspen dies you can also purchase them if you um, don't have a hundred dollar order but you want those dies you could just purchase those and get this one for your freebie you know um, and then a few weeks back, so I, I wanted to show you that one because I finished it after the video. And then I did play around with putting some ribbon on here and the, <laughs> the members of my Sue Stampfield Facebook groups, pretty much uh, a couple people liked the ribbon, but most people said no, no, 86 the ribbon. So I've taken it off, but I'll show you what it looked like in case you're curious. Um, it went, it went there. So Cup and someone even said a second leaf up there instead would be nice, but um, so always options, right? So many options. And then a few weeks ago in a previous video, or I don't even remember when it was, maybe it was last week, we did this one, which is the polka dot paper, but in the silver, and also with the blending brushes. This one I just used one color, and that was the Knight of Navy, and of course, then just the plain navy cardstock. So, a little recap there on what's been happening. Um, if you want project sheets um, that you can print out that have dimensions and all of that, um, I don't, uh, I don't put those in the YouTube descriptions because they're just they're hard to find, and they don't always make as much sense. So, I prefer to do. Um, detailed project sheets. So um, those go out to my email list, my email subscribers. And so anyone can subscribe to that. It's they're free. And I just send them out mm, usually once a week. Um, we usually have, I guess, about three emails a month, I would say sometimes four a month, but it just depends <laughs> on how busy I get. So um, suestanfield.com and click on subscribe to get those project sheets. And let's see. Oh, what did I just do? Mm -mm -mm. Let's have that go away. Oh, it still says creative connections. Oops, I need to fix that. I wonder if I can. I don't know if I can. Oh, I can. Let's change it to <laughs> Susan Campfield, which is my name, and Sue Stampfield, which is normally what it says. So what is Creative Connections? Creative Connections is an event that I do. Um, I want to pop back over here so I can be talking to you. Uh, it's an event that I do um, for my team. And I uh, actually uh, pair up with some other demonstrators and uh, leaders, and we invite all of our teams and make it really big. So I'm one of uh, four organizers. I was in charge of the technology. So Saturday, I was really nervous about that, but it went really, really well. And actually, what I'm going to show you tonight is what I presented uh, my demonstration from that event. Hey, Deborah in Australia. What's the weather like in Australia? So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the, the camera and let's go ahead and get this party started. So let me bring in what we're playing with tonight. Why is my light so yellow? Doesn't it seem super yellow? Hmm. All right, well, we'll throw another light on. That might be a little bit better. All right, so we have, let's make sure this light's on. It is. All right, so we've got the Design a Treat stamp set. And then we have the um, Design a Treat box dies. These are really cool dies. I don't know if you remember, a while back I was making a uh, 60th anniversary card for my uh, mother and father-in-law. And um, it was with the soft seedlings in soft sea foam. And I actually used these dies to make, um, to die cut the six and the zero to make a, a 60th card. So the um, numbers that come in this are awesome <laughs> and very versatile. But mainly what, what we use 
is this box and then it comes with all these different pieces to decorate the box. So I'm going to just uh, poke this out. I did not did not clean my die properly. So you can see that in the in the die I have some cardstock that's stuck in there. If I don't clean that out, it's going to build up and eventually those little slots are not going to cut. And those slots are pretty critical to this box working. So I just want to poke those out before I make another box. So let's clear that out. There we go. Now we're ready. So we're going to take this and we're going to die cut a box. You have a five month old uh, puppy, Patricia. Oh, sweet. But they are a handful, aren't they? <laughs> Mine are six now. So they are they are mellowing nicely, but they still have their moments, especially when we see any sort of little critter like the uh, chipmunks we saw on our walk today that caused a lot of um, a lot of pulling. <laughs> All right. So I have a piece of crumb cake here. It is five inches by five inches. And I'm going to take this box and I'm going to put it at an angle and I'm going to die cut that. Now, I suppose that you could go maybe a teeny bit smaller than five by five, but not much. And I, I'd prefer to make sure I end up with a box that is correct and is not missing any pieces. To me, it's not worth it to cut it too close. Um, and I don't really, I really don't think you could get a whole lot closer, but five by five is a really good one. Oh, Cocker Spaniel. Oh, so cute. Especially when they're puppies with those big floppy ears. Oh, sounds adorable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. So let me crank it through. So this box is super easy to put together. And it, my favorite way, I'm going to show you a couple tricks that I have found to kind of lock this box in place and to be able to assemble it without using any adhesive. So you can see I've got my box all cut out there. These tabs on each end and these slots are how you assemble the box. So I'm going to go through that in just a moment. While we have our die cutting machine at the ready, though, I'm going to grab a piece and flip my bottom plate. Oh, and I hit the camera. Oh, goodness. So sorry. Um, I have a piece of very vanilla cardstock here, and I'm going to grab the antlers because we're making a deer today. And then uh, my secret sauce, <laughs> if you will, for making this box um, be totally awesome um, are these little ovals that actually comes with three of them. Uh, these are little labels. I'll show you those in a moment. Now, I think the purpose for these ovals is actually to um, mount the numbers on, but I use them a little different way. So let's... Um, lay this on here and go ahead and uh, send that through. And I'll show you how to put the box together here. So we can take this away, get our pieces out here. Yeah, we're, whoops, strapped it on the floor. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Just recover that. Okay. Fortunately, it didn't go far, so we're all good. And then I want to show you what some of these other dies in the set are, too. We'll cover that in a few minutes. So I'm going to put my... Works better if I put my box <laughs> back on. That just wants to roll. And I can stick my antlers on here. So we've got the antlers. We've got uh, bunny ears. We have a bat. So you can see all the different holidays that you can do. Um, but with these numbers, you have unlimited possibilities, weddings, um, anniversaries, we've got the, the present for the, or the bow for the present. We have a pair of ears here. I'll show you a couple critters I made out of those. And then we have this one, which is a label that has kind of a lacy edge, which would be really perfect for a wedding. These would be great wedding favors. Um, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to grab our stamp set and I'm going to pull out this little face. So this little face is very versatile. Um, I'm going to use it, of course, for a reindeer because that's what we're making right now. All right. So who knows? <laughs> it's quiz time. Um, so who knows the... Uh, let's uh, get my face on straight here. 
um, the names of Santa's reindeer. Um, because we need a name here for this reindeer. So tell me which, which of Santa's reindeer we are uh, making today. So got my box here. Now I want to put the face on one of these wider panels. The narrow ones um, will be the sides. I want it on one of the, uh, the wider panels. Is that what I said? I hope I said wider. Uh, okay, the first one I see is Dasher. All right, we're going to go with Dasher. Um, those of you that are putting in other <laughs> names, keep those at the ready because um, there is going to be more quizzing later. So um, I'm glad you guys are well versed in your reindeer lore. I'm going to grab my early espresso ink pad here. It was kind of squeaky. Sorry about that. And I'm going to ink up my little face. Now this face can be used for a number of critters. Today it's going to be a reindeer but I've got a bunch more to show you. I'm going to slide it down so that I can make sure I get it in the middle. You can, even if you're kind of worried, like I am right now, a little nervous about getting it in the center, you can actually fold on these score lines so that you can see where they are a little bit better. Um, we've discussed in the past how horrible Susan's eyesight is, so bear with me. Okay, I got that pretty much in the center. So I've got my little face there. And now I can close up my ink pad because I am done with that. Um, this stamp set is, um, it only has uh, five images. Um, this one is a really nice, let me grab one here, come here. A really nice frame for this these dies here. If you want to put a frame around it, that's what that stamp is for. The For You is very nice. Um, these are just patterns. If you want to do random patterns on your, your box, you could do a cheetah and do these, uh, or a leopard with these spots. Um, and then this one is a, a nice stripe. So we've got our box here. We're going to put this cushion aside. And I'm going to fold on all of these score lines now. A bone folder would be super nice if I could dig one out of the pile. <clears throat> So I'm going to go ahead and just crease on those score lines and I'm going to show you how I put this box together. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to stop and I'm going to go over here to our antlers because I want to glue these together. So these are the antlers. No, I don't. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm, going to, I'm just going to keep going. We'll, we'll discuss that in a moment. <laughs> okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to score on all of the score lines. Give them a good sharp crease. Now you can see it does come with tabs here. You absolutely can put the adhesive on those tabs if you want to. I did not find it necessary if I was making the box out of cardstock. However, if you're making the box out of designer paper, like for a uh, little favor box for a wedding, um, I think our Splendid Day paper, the silver with the flowers on it would be absolutely gorgeous for a wedding. And you could do a silver bow on top. Um, I would probably glue on the tabs because the designer paper is a little bit, um, it's thinner. And so it wouldn't have as much stability. So you can see I've got everything folded up um, and ready to go. So you can see that the two wider pieces go together and these little half circles are the top of the box. And then the slot slides onto those half circles. And then the other slot slides on to the half circles. And that is how we hold our box together. Okay. And then you can take the antlers. I just spread my little um, half circles apart here. Just widen them and then you can stick the antlers inside that, that area. What I found is that if I actually adhered these ovals to the, whatever I'm sliding in that top part, it sort of locks the whole box together because it can go deeper in and it forms this kind of a, a, a um, a lock, I guess, is the word I want, um, that just holds the whole business together so it doesn't fall apart. So I've got that little oval on there, and I'm going to set that aside to dry for a moment. Now I am making a reindeer. Um, these are Santa's reindeer. This is Dasher, right? Is that who we're doing, Dasher? So I'm going to put a, um, 
harness on Dasher so we can pull that sleigh. So I have a piece of the brushed metallic cardstock. This is the one that is um, a free with a $50 purchase right now. It's the same one I die cut this leaf out of. Um, and it comes in three colors. This is the, uh, the bronze color, which is very light. And I'm going to just put a little bit of the multi-purpose liquid glue on the back of this because I'm using such skinny little pieces here. You could also use glue dots for this. And if they're too wide, I just fold them in half. So I'm going to just pop the collar onto my reindeer there. Now this collar piece, for lack of a better term, is cut at one and three eighths inches. And it's four, uh, excuse me, it's a fourth of an inch wide and cut at one and three eighths. Now this box is a little bit bigger than one and a quarter and a little bit smaller than one and three eighths. So can you see how it kind of hangs over the side just a little bit? So, oops, isn't stuck on yet. So I just trim that edge off once I have it stuck on there. Give it a minute here. Well, not a whole minute, but a few seconds. And I'm going to flip it over. And you see how it just sticks over just a tiny bit. You can leave it. It's not a big deal. Or you can center it. I'm just going to trim it right off. Okay, so I have my little collar there. Um, you know, we have some rivets on those collars. So this maybe is a bell to jingle. So I've got the uh, brushed metallic dots. This is the bronze color here. And I'm just going to put that in the center. And then I have my little antlers. This is Dasher again that we're doing. So come here. Just want to spread apart those little half circles and slide in the antlers. And that oval is going to slide down in and just kind of hold that whole box together. Slide it all the way down. So there we have a little reindeer. However, if I'm remembering correctly, I believe Santa had more than one reindeer. So let's zoom in just a little bit. So this is Dasher. Uh, what is another? Oh, we're asking about what fits in that. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Um, but you're right. Hershey Kisses are perfect. Uh, Hershey Nuggets are perfect. Um, and so, okay, uh, give me the name of another reindeer. You guys had some other rain Dancer, okay? Pam says Dancer. All right, so we've got Dasher and Dancer. They go together, all right? What's another reindeer that Santa had? Who else do we, who else did we have in the party? Because I don't remember. Uh, on Dasher, on Dancer. Got another name for me. I can cheat. I have it. I printed it out over here. Uh, we've got Dasher and Dancer. How about Prancer? Yes. And Vixen, I'm seeing. All right. We got Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. How about Comet? Oh, I'm running out of space. I gotta, I gotta zoom out here. <laughs> Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? <laughs> so we also want to add in our little, let's see, what can I do this? Wait, I'm missing one. I'm missing somebody. Who did I forget? Okay, I got to go through the whole thing here. Uh, we got Dasher, Dasher Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen. All right, we got everybody, except for the most famous reindeer of all. And that, of course, is Rudolph. So to make Rudolph extra special, Rudolph got a red collar, just a piece of red cardstock with some red rhinestones on it. And then Rudolph's nose I made with the pearlized enamel effects in real red. And I just squeezed on a really big blob and let that dry. You do want to let that dry for a good 20 to 30 minutes. If you're like me, put it way up high <laughs> because I will nearly always put my elbow in it. Um, so we've got uh, Rudolph, but there is somebody definitely missing from this party. Hang on, we got a lot of reindeer here. And that is, of course, our 
Santa Claus. We don't want to forget Santa. So here is our little Santa box. And this one I did the, um, the label. Where's our little label here? Here it is. I did one of these labels with the words for you from the set. And again, I put that oval on there to just kind of lock the box together. Again, I did a quarter inch my one and three eighths and trimmed it down a bit. The buckle is the, the brushed silver cardstock from the silver specialty paper. And then a little quarter inch square in the middle. So the, the uh, buckle is um, three eighths of an inch square and then a little uh, quarter inch square in time in, in inside of that. The buttons are these. These are the classic matte dots. And that's what formed the buttons on our little Santa. So we've got the whole party here. Now these are small. Um, somebody ate all my candy. So uh, I'll show you one in a minute though. But um, so if you give somebody this many, then they'd have maybe enough chocolate, <laughs> right? So let's put our reindeer aside and let's take a look at some other critters that you could make with this um, treat box. Um, so this one is uh, for Halloween. The, the bat wings come right in the set. Uh, instead of just lightly nesting the bat wings on the box, I did add that oval um, to it so that they kind of locked inside and wouldn't keep falling off the box. And then I use the washi tape. Now here's the thing with this box. If you remember when we assembled it, let me grab, I have an, a spare reindeer at hand here. When we assembled the box, those slots have to go over that half circle to seal the box. So if you stick anything on, if you glue anything on that half circle, you can't open the box without ripping it. Okay. So that's why I do it this way, Ellen, so that you can open the box without ripping it because all they do is pull off the antlers and they can open it right up. Okay. If you glue something on that tab, they are going to have to rip open your box. And I have issues with that. I worked hard on making these. <laughs> I don't want them to rip it open. Right. So if you decide to make a bat, I know the tendency would be want to add ear, uh, eyes to this uh, round thing and you can, it just means that they're gonna have to tear the box to get it open and get to the chocolate. So my bat is truly blind, blind as a bat. <laughs> and uh, he's still absolutely, I mean, I don't think there's any question that that's a bat. He doesn't need eyes, right? And then this just comes off, you open it up. And this one I have something in it because it's heavy. What do I have in this one? Now this one I did uh, adhere the sides. If you wanna see what that looks like, this was the first time I made it. and. Um, I hadn't realized at that point you really didn't need to. So this is a Hershey nugget, which fits in there perfectly. And of course you can wrap those with designer paper and make them uh, fancy. I think you might even be able to double stack. Let's test it out. I'm gonna set this, uh, this little guy aside. I guess I better put that back together real quick so that we can uh, leave, leave the chocolate out. So glad I had that in there. I'd forgotten I'd put one inside. And then I'll show you what a Hershey Kiss looks like in these as well here. Okay, so we'll get our bat back on there. Now in this set, so we've got, those are a couple holidays you could do. Here's another holiday. You could do a Easter bunny. How cute would that be at Easter dinner to have uh, one of these little boxes at each person's um, place around the table? Um, I put this label, I die cut this label and glued it on the bottom of the box, which adds extra stability and kind of looks like feet. <laughs> and then I added, of course, a little flower here. The bunny ears are right out of the set. Again, I did add that oval on the bunny ears to lock them down. And I knew used another oval for our little bunny butt here to do the bunny's tail. So you could certainly do Google eyes. Absolutely. I love the um, little closed sleepy eyes though. Um, this one's not really, you guys are saying I'm clever. This isn't really clever. It's just kind of right out of the design. I guess I did add the feet and the tail, but again, those are right, <laughs> they're in the die set. So, um, so no extra pieces from what you already have in the set. Now I've got a couple more critters to share before I get to, before I get to those, I wanted to show you the numbers because the numbers are really cool. So these number, oops, my present is opening there. These I did in designer paper. I did not 
glue the tabs on these. I think they would be more secure if I had, but I did not. I thought this would be really fun. Let's say it's a child's fifth birthday. So you could give them this one with a clue in it, and they'd have to go by find box two, which would have another clue in it, to box three, to box four, to box five, would actually lead to the present, because this is a pretty small present for a five-year-old, right? But you could make it a fun little scavenger hunt. Um, these would also be really nice. You could do them uh, with a, uh, in a, pretty uh, designer series paper that has some gold elements to it and uh, add a gold bow on top and um, it can put a 50th on there or just the 5-0 and it could be a really cute favor for a 50th anniversary party. Uh, these would also be really cute for a wedding as a little present to the guests. So with a pretty patterned paper and then a silver bow on them, I think they would be adorable for a wedding. Oh, puff paint for the bunny tail. That would be super great idea, Kathy. I love it. So um, this one, I have a nugget inside that is um, wrapped. Doesn't want to come out. There we go. So I wrapped it with the paper, which, you know, adds a little decorative edge. I was just curious if you double stack these. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's too tall. I don't think it's really going to fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can squeeze two in there, but you're not going to be able to have your oval stick down. So then you would want to leave this flat and just nest your your bow on the top and just know that it might it might wiggle out. <laughs> so because once you get those both in there, it's you you know it's going to be hard to push that uh, oval in it anywhere because it's this is full, <laughs> super full. So I would just go with one chocolate. And, um, and go with that. Let me show you what a kiss looks like in the box here. So this one, I, yep, this one's got a kiss inside. So let's open that and see. Um, so there we have a little kiss. I think these are birthday cake kisses, actually, the birthday cake flavor um, that I got at the store. So uh, those are a perfect fit. I mean, just nest in there really nicely. So I have a couple stack with the flat sides together, Jane says, and Mary says stack uh, with the flat sides together for these. Hmm. All right, let's give it a go. So flat and flat like that, you guys mean, or you mean more like this? Let's see how much room that gives us. I'm going to just kind of tilt it up. That gives us, yeah, that does give us a little bit of a um, an edge. These I actually glued on point down. If I had done them the long way, I think that would work if you definitely wanted to in there. But again, this is only designer paper. So then I would definitely glue these tabs together because um, those are kind of heavy, <laughs> those chocolates. And doing two might be a bit much for this lightweight paper. So um, are you ready to look at two more uh, critters? Uh, let's slide these aside. Oh, let's see here. Okay, so um, my next critter is a puppy. We were talking about dogs a little bit ago. So this one is a puppy. He's uh, got some spots on him and he even has a little tail. <laughs> Just a scrap of cardstock, just cut at an angle, and uh, I just glue, put a little glue on there and glued that on. And he's also got a rhinestone collar, very similar to Ray Rudolph. Um, and then I just colored the spots on with the Stampin' Blends. And then these are the ears out of the set right here. And then those ears actually made me think of another animal. So the other animal I made was a pig. <laughs> because they look like pig ears to me. So once again, I used that oval. This time I used it for a pig snout. Um, and I just took my marker and drew two dots on there. Again, I used these same classic matte dots for the pig eyes. And I used my Stampin' Blend in, I believe it was Light Flirty Flamingo, to do the blushing uh, cheeks on the pig. You could also use Petal Pink if you didn't want it to be that bright. And of course, he has to have a tail, right? I think I made this too long, <laughs> this curly tail. I made a zoo, I know, right? <laughs> and so uh, this is just like, a, oh, I don't know, eighth, eighth of an inch of cardstock. And I used my bone folder to kind of uh, break down the fibers and then I curled it around a pencil to give the curl. I think it could have been a little shorter, 
but it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of crazy little pigtail back there. So there we have our menagerie. I would love to see a cow. If somebody wants to do a cow, you could just literally do the spots, right? And then instead of the, you could, uh, instead of that face, I would do the oval as the the muzzle on the cow and then the dots. I think a cow would be super cute. So <laughs> there we have our fun little design a treat bundle with these cute boxes. So I'm thinking birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, a super versatile little box that you could use for a lot of things. I think a turkey for Thanksgiving would be really cute. These would make nice turkey feathers, right? Um, a chicken. <laughs> I don't know. A chicken would be fun to go with our pig and our cow, right? Or imaginary cow that I haven't made. So uh, you really can let your imagination go wild and do some fun creating. Um, you absolutely, you know, I made a dog. I'm a dog person. What can I say? But I think a kitty could also be really cute with this. Um, so yeah, that is our boat. Oh, we got another one hanging on here. This is um, this was a bunny I made with just gray, so not an Easter theme. And I never actually finished this one. But in case you're wondering what the, the bunny could absolutely be done in other colors, right? So that is the Design a Treat bundle. And just a few of the many things that you could create with this adorable little box. Let's bring in our Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen. <sighs> and Rudolph and Santa and our bunny and our bat. Oh my gosh, they don't even fit. They don't even fit on the screen. It's out of control. <laughs> and like I said, I, I think uh, uh, one for a wedding would be absolutely adorable in the silver paper. And uh, what a perfect uh, little favor for the, the guests with just that little um, kiss in there. Very inexpensive for the uh, bride and groom and uh, uh, someone crafty like you might get a request to make uh, a, uh, a guest favor. What do you call those favor boxes for a wedding? So there we go. There's all our critters. I'm going to flip the Oh, 12 days of Christmas. Absolutely great. A bear in soft suede. Oh, you guys are so smart. I love these ideas. Um, yeah, you absolutely could do an advent calendar. Um, with the numbers uh, for the holidays and use some fun, ho more holiday themed paper than I've used here. And these numbers are, are they're twofers. Um, I probably have the rest of them floating around on my desk somewhere. But uh, when you die cut them, what I mean for that, I, what I mean by two for, two for one is that you get the frame of the number, which is what I've used here, but you also get that number one. So you get um, two with one cut. Now keep in mind, if you're going to do the framed version like I did, when you cut out some of the numbers like the four and the six and the eight and the nine, you want to keep that um, the little dot <laughs> for the inside of the four or the dot, the two dots for the inside of the eight. I hope that makes sense. So you'd want to make sure that you um, kept a hold of those so that they, they didn't get lost. It's hard to lay the pig down because of that tail. <laughs> Same with the puppy. But it's so cute to have that tail. So I am going to flip the camera around. <gasps> Let's see. There we go. Yay. <laughs> So uh, 12 days of Christmas, good idea. I was going to see if there were any other ideas that I missed because, um, yeah, you, a, what a silver dollar fit. You know what, Jeannie, I think you'd have to measure that. Um, I will tell you the dimensions in the box. I think it'd be too small. A quarter would fit. You could stack in uh, dollars worth of quarters. Um, actually it's Susan B. Anthony. Those aren't, uh, there aren't those about as big as the quarter. Um, yeah. So this is going to be, as you can see, can you see that dimension? So it's a 16th of an inch wider than one and a fourth. <sighs> That's math. <laughs> like that big slide. <sighs> okay. So one by nine sixteenths, um, is square is the actual size of the box. 
I just cut one and three eighths for the collar and then cut off that extra 16th of an inch. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Um, sorry, you didn't see what I was measuring because I didn't flip the camera. You saw the side of my head. Oh, goodness, Susan. Um, let me show you that one more time. <clears throat> this is what I was doing, uh, measuring this right here. So if I measure the bottom of the box, you can see it's just over one and a quarter and just less than one and three eighths. So it would be one and nine sixteenths, I believe. I'm doing my math correctly. So let me flip back this, uh, the camera here. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight uh, and uh, letting me share these cute projects with you. I will be back. Uh, oh, don't forget, we have Crafternoon coming up. That is what I am. Uh, working on right now is designing all of the Crafternoon projects. So if you're not familiar with Crafternoon, that's my monthly event. And it'll be a public video that you can all watch on uh, August 20th at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I don't remember what day of the month the 20th is, but uh, whenever it is, that's when Crafternoon is. So um, there'll be a public video and I will be sharing a fun fold design. Customers who ordered from me last month we'll get a packet in the mail um, with that project. I haven't sent them yet. So they're, they're coming. I haven't mailed them yet. Um, and they'll be doing it along with me in the video, but anybody can watch. And then I take that unique fun fold and I do uh, multiple designs with it. And then the people who ordered last month get a tutorial. So people who are ordering this month will get a packet next month and get to take part in Crafternoon. And what I love about that is we actually get to make the project together. Um, you guys help me out on these videos and help me uh, design the projects, which is super fun. But it's even more fun when you can actually make it right along with me. So have a great rest of your week, everyone. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.